Welcome, I'm Bill Marshall. This is a talk about solar farms and why I favor their inclusion in the future of Maysville and Mason County. I hope you'll find this video informative. I start by believing that we all want to have a sustainable future in Maysville and Mason County. If you differ, differ with any information I present, I hope you'll tell me alternate sources that will help me expand my understanding. If we can agree on the facts, then together we can make decisions to move us toward our common goal. I've been researching solar for over two years and my research has led me to favor solar firms in Mason County. This video reviews setbacks for solar farms. Whenever, we have a land, whenever a new land use is discussed, setbacks are one of the first points we consider. The draft regulation states, and the key point is, 50 feet from any property line and 100 feet from any property line shared by a public road. To consider this, let's first review the setbacks for other land uses. As we start this process, I confess I'm going to consider wind turbines last. Their one set mile setback seems to demonstrate that they were zoned completely different than other land uses. Page 32 of the land use ordinance defines the residential setbacks for each use. In residential areas, no use can have a front setback mark. Page 32 of the Land Use Ordinance defines the residential setbacks for each use. In residential areas, no use has a front setback of more than 50 feet, which is only half of the proposed 100-foot setback for solar farms. In, in non-residential areas, the I-2A heavy industry land use requires a 150-foot setback. There's no other land use that has a setback of more than 75 feet. Solar Farm's proposed 100-foot setback is 25-foot greater than any land use except I-2A heavy industry. The maximum allowed height in an I-2A heavy industry area is 75 feet, while the regulation proposes a 20-foot limit for Solar Farm. An I-2A heavy industry has a higher expectation of generating pollution, with noise and air being only two forms of pollution that come to mind. Considering these facts, the proposed 100-foot setback along roads seems completely appropriate. In residential areas, no use has a side setback of more than 10 feet, which is only 20% of the 50-foot setback for solar farms. In non-residential areas, the I-2A heavy industry land use requires 50-foot side setbacks, which is the same as proposed solar setbacks. This, even though every other land use is allowed to be taller and will almost certainly generate more pollution. In rural areas, the maximum front setback is 100 feet, the same proposed for the draft ordinance of solar. This is even though the maximum allowed height is in every case more than solar's 20-foot height limit. I don't intend to relitigate the wind turbine setback of one mile, beyond noting that the first windmill requires a minimum of 2,010.6 acres of ground. That fact alone tells me that the wind turbine setback was really a poison pill used to block wind turbines from Mason County. I believe this set of solar farm videos demonstrates how Mason County will benefit from solar farms as a land use. With that in mind, I'm not going to spend any more time comparing solar farms to wind turbines. Uh, While I endorse the proposed solar farm setbacks, let us consider how much land is being taken by the setback of 100 foot on roads and 50 feet along non-road boundaries. I used Google Maps to measure the approximate lengths of each segment of my farm's boundary. 
across the top are the 50 and foot, the two specified distances in the ordinance. The yellow numbers are each boundary segment setback area, assuming the draft regulation is adopted. In total, my farm will need a road buffer of 23.8 acres. The neighbor buffer will require another 26.6 acres. So in total, the draft leg regulation will mean 50.4 acres are taken for setbacks. Understand, I support the setback called for in the draft regulation, but I hope everybody will remember that each foot of increase requires real land, and a foot takes approximately another three quarters of an acre from my use every time the setbacks increased by a foot. Wind turbines were designed to be a poison pill and so have no bearing on desirable land use. The proposed setbacks uh, greater than or equal to those of any land use other than heavy industries and since solar farms will have a shorter structure than almost uh, any acceptable land use and less pollution than most any land use. The setback proposed of 100 feet on roads and 50 feet on boundaries are appropriate and should be adopted. Let's recap why solar farms make a great way to help our community's economic development. After viewing this entire series of videos, I think you will agree that solar farms will improve our quality of life because compared to current alternatives, they reduce soil erosion, fertilizer leaching from crop fields into the environment, they reduce pollution from herbicides used on row crops, they reduce livestock on pasture cutting up sods in wet weather, and livestock in confinement get generating point sources of pollution, both odor and animal waste. Solar farms will increase employment, the solar farm will need some labor for equip equipment maintenance, and even more labor will be used in mowing. Solar will require more labor than either cash grain or cow ca calf operation on the same acreage. Add another cash, and it will add another cash stream flowing into our community. Our area used to sell tobacco, milk, and textile products to the world. We've lost those markets. Solar farms can replace those lost cash flows into our community. Solar farms can provide strong revenue streams to support the land ownership. Solar farms also help support our community's services. It's fairly normal for a 100 acre parcel to contribute $24,000 yearly to local community taxing authorities. Remember, a producing solar farm needs few community services. A solar farm does not impact or need natural gas, city water, sewer or landfill capacity, rail service, river service, or large capacity road systems. Solar farms help each goal of the comprehensive plan lays out for economic development. This graph demonstrates that solar is now the least cost source of wholesale electric. This makes it critical that our land use regulations allow solar to contribute to our community. In addition to this video, please check out cwmclass.com slash solar dash farm dash in. Uh, this one was solar farm setbacks, but also available are videos, an introduction video, a video on the phases of solar farm enterprises, a one on will the status quo agriculture serve our next generation, Solar Farm Zoning Regulations in Maysville, Mason County. Why Solar Farms Should Be in Land Use 1A. Uh, frequently Asked Questions About Solar Farms. And finally, a video summation. My understanding of the facts have led me to favor solar as a long-term way to support land ownership in our area and to generate revenue for the entire community. I thank you for your time and look forward to your comments. You can reach me at that physical address or that email address. Again, thank you.